call it out or praise or pour. Uh, I'm, I'm yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ooh. Goodness. We'll definitely keep her in our prayers. I got you. All right, we'll definitely keep her in our prayers. Pray for all those that are doing the, the play practice and everything, that all that go, goes well. But uh, if y'all would, we'll get started. If you would, join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for, for the, the chance to get to come to your house, the privilege of getting to come to your house here today, Lord, and to, 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 to learn about your word and to, to worship you. Lord, we ask you to be with all of these Sunday school classes. Please be with the pastor as he brings your message here in just a, a little while. Lord, help us to, to do everything we can to be better Christians today than we were yesterday. Lord, help us to be good representatives of you down here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning again. Uh, uh, a while back I heard a question and... Uh, I had made a, a statement, uh, I don't remember exactly what it was, but pretty much it was basically to the effect of, you know, uh, leave your burdens and your worries at the cross. And, uh, you know, as we've all heard that our entire lives. And uh, I had a brother ask me, or he kind of just made the statement, he said, isn't it real lazy for us just to put it at Jesus' feet and then not do anything? And I got to thinking about it and studying on it a little bit. And I, I thought it was an amazing question to think about and to kind of ponder on. And I know some people will disagree with me, and that's okay. And some people are, you know, and they will say, you know, pray about it and forget about it. And, I, you know, I've heard that, and that's cool too. There's, I don't have any problem with that. But I thought about the question... And I kept on thinking, and I thought it was a good question because I thought the, I thought the answer was yes. I thought the answer was, yeah, it makes us incredibly lazy. Uh, some of the scripture that I found that kind of goes along with this is Psalms 55 and 22. And we've heard this again before. Uh, plenty of times, but it says, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Now, when he says moved, he's not going to suffer you to be moved. When, they, when, he, when the scripture says that, it's talking about slipping and falling. Uh, he's not going to let you slip and fall. And then I got to thinking, you know, it's kind of hard to slip and fall if you're just standing still and you're not doing anything. You got to be moving. You got to be doing something to, to, to encounter the dangers of slipping and falling in which he tells us, don't worry about that, I got you. I'm going to protect you from slipping and falling. Well, we got to be moving to begin with before that to, 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 to be an issue in our lives. Uh, and we are instructed to take our burdens to the Lord, our, our problems and our anxieties and our issues and our stresses and just the things we deal with every day and every single person's got them and they all the same and they all different and we're supposed to be taking that. We are supposed to be laying those at, at, at the foot of the cross. Uh, but I thought about this question a lot and thinking about it, you know, are we lazy 
Christians. You know, we are self-proclaimed Christians. We're proud of being Christians. But are we lazy Christians when it comes to some of this stuff? And I think that's something we need to think about individually. Are we being a lazy Christian? And, and then once we think about that for a minute, we kind of need to, we need, you know, are you, are you satisfied with the answer you come up with for yourself? You know, you might have said, yeah, I'm pretty lazy and I'm good with it. <laughs> okay, that's between you and a good Lord. And you may say, yeah, I've been lazy and I need, I need to do something about it. Or you may say, you know, yeah, I don't feel like I'm a lazy Christian. And that's fine. But we need to think about it. We need to ask ourselves about it. We need, to, we need to talk to the Lord about it. Lord, you know, never mind what you think. What's he think? Does he think you're being a lazy Christian? Does he think I'm being a, a, a lazy Christian? Uh, you think, well, what does it mean to be a lazy Christians? And uh, I guess it can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And everybody in here may come up with a different answer to that question. To that question, but I think it's a, a a question that we need to talk to God about. Does he does he think we are, and what does he think a, a lazy Christian may be? And he may have a different definition for everybody in here, but we're not going to know what it is till we talk to him about it. Uh, do you do what you think you need to do to qualify you as just a good church going Christian you know I go to church I do I do what I got to do and did a lot of us a lot of folks will come to church they get saved and they figure they're good they don't bother coming back we may say okay I come to church every Sunday I come put in my hour and then I'm gone you know I punched the clock, so to speak, at church. Uh, we've all heard the question, do you have to go to church to be saved? And I heard an answer that I had never heard before. And I, I really liked it. And it says, you don't have to go to church to be saved. And not going to church is fine. If all you're worried about is yourself. And I thought. Man that's. I ain't never thought about it that way. You ain't got to go to church to get saved. You don't have to darken the door frame of this, one, this church. But it's all, if, if all you're worried about is you. You know. I got mine. And that unfortunately that's kind of the. The, the mind frame of the world, as you know, as we call, I'm going to handle me and you handle you and just don't get in my way in the process. That might be part of the definition of being a, a, a lazy Christian. Uh, and I'm not really talking about, you know, during COVID and I'm not talking about shut-ins and that kind of, that kind of stuff. That's, that's different. We kind of focus on Lazy, lazy Christians, Christians with no interest in fellowshipping with other Christians. And God's word tells us we need to do that. And we don't need to, 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 to not do that. When I say lazy Christians, I'm talking about Christians that are just really happy that they're going to go to heaven, but they're not real interested in whether or not anybody else does. You handling you, and you ain't worried about nobody else. It kind of goes back with that other definition. You know, maybe God has a, a plan to use you in some kind of way, but you got to show up in order for that plan to go into effect. Uh, maybe God had a plan, but you figured you had other things to do. You 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 had things that was a little higher on your priority list and I'm, I'm just as guilty as, as, as anybody if not more so uh, maybe there's a young Christian that needs some mentorship 
here at the church or somebody that, that you know. And I will say we have got a lot, a lot of young Christians here at this church. Well, it's hard to get mentorship from folks that ain't here with them. It's hard to, you could have a, a young person, a young Christian that's been working beside one of us and had no idea. You know, that's an opportunity that the Lord has given us. Are we going to take advantage of it? Or we can just be a, a lazy Christian. We need to think about these things because that's why we're here. That's why God put us here. That's why he put, I believe, that's why he put these people in our path, so to speak, in our lives. There's a reason these young kids are here with us more seasoned people. I'm not that old. You ain't got to laugh when I just said seasoned. <laughs> but uh, maybe God is testing us. Maybe he's testing us to see how we're going to react in these situations. There's a lot of testing in this Bible. You, people don't believe that the, that the Lord will test you. Like, Man, this thing's full of tests. Read it. And I don't know why we would think he wouldn't test us. He's tested some of these big names in here. Uh, if you're getting tested by God, do you think you passed? I just say it that easy. How do you think you did on this last test that, that you feel like the Lord put you in, in front of you? How do you think you did? It's kind of one of them you go to school and you take a test. And as soon as you get home, your parents, how do you, how you think you did on the test? Well, I have no idea how I did. I tried my best. I think I did pretty good. Well, maybe we need to talk to the Lord about how would I do? Tell me something I could have done better. You know, should have I reacted differently or is that the way you wanted me to react during this test? We need to talk to God about these things. You know, we don't need to just wonder. We've got a resource that we can go to and talk about this. And I do believe if we go to the Lord in prayer in the right heart and asking these questions, he's going to let us know. He's going to let us know. Good job. He might let you know. Man, you messed that up. But next time I put that in front of you, look about doing this right here. I think he's going to give us the opportunity. If we, if we go to him in the right heart and in the right mind. If you, if you think about how you did on the last test, if I passed didn't immediately jump out at your mouth, you might want to talk to him about it. You might want to talk to him about it and just see how, how we need to improve as Christians. How do I need to do better as a Christian? How do I need to be representing Jesus Christ better next time I get an opportunity to? Uh, we were talking about leaving our burdens at the cross and... Another verse that, we, that we've all heard is Matthew 6 and 26. It says, Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? And we've all heard that verse preached on plenty of times. Uh... You know, pretty much, God takes care of the little Tweety birds. Surely he's going to take care of us. But I've got a friend, Brother Johnny, and he said something, and I really liked it. And he said, God fed them, talking about the little birds, in the wintertime. He said, he fed them, but he didn't put the food in the nest. They had to get up and go find it. And I thought, man, that's just like us. The Lord's going to take care of us. 
But he's not going to put the food in the nest. We want these blessings to come, to come our way. Well, he may or may not drop them in the middle of our living room while we're sitting there watching TV. We may have to get out of the nest and go look for this. And it's there. He's put it all around us. The birds could have stayed in the nest and starved, slammed to death. Even though they got a field full of food all around them. And we can do the exact same thing. We can do the exact same thing. They could have stayed in the nest and they said, but God said he was going to take care of me. Well, yeah, you had to get out of the recliner. And I heard a story before about a flood. Not the flood, just a regular flood. Uh, said a boat came by to rescue this man. And he said, no, I'm going to stay in my house. God's going to take care of me. And then he had to climb up on his roof because the water was getting so deep. And of course, a boat came by, rescued him. He said, no, I'm staying right here. God is going to take care of me. And then after a little while, he had to get up on top of his chimney because the water was getting so deep. And a helicopter came by to, you know, swoop him up. And he said, no, I'm staying right here because God's going to save me. He drowned. And he went to heaven and he said, Lord, what happened? I trusted in you to, to save me. And the Lord said, I sent you two boats and a helicopter. We're too busy looking for the parting of the Red Sea to see that the Lord's put something right there. He, uh, to me, that's kind of a picture of a lazy Christian. You know, he's, he believes in the Lord, but he's not looking at exactly what the Lord's doing for him right, right, in, fr right, in, front of his, right in front of his face. He's trusting, but he's not looking. It's like us as Christians. We trust in the Lord. We read this Bible. The church is doing a read the Bible in a year thing. <laughs> That's cool. How many people are you sharing with what you read that day? I'm just as guilty as anybody. I have to catch myself. Say, hey, I read this this morning on this, this day. And, hey, that was a pretty cool story. Maybe I need to tell somebody about this. Man, you ever, you ever read in the Bible about this right here? And you might somebody say, no, I ain't never read a Bible. Boom, Lord just opened a, an avenue of communication for you. Maybe you slide them a Bible. You know, it all, it, all, it all works together in God's plan. But, and he, he, he put us in that little posi position. Uh, I read a quote from, uh, I guess he's considered a, a famous orator. His name's Frederick Douglass, a, a, a very large name in history. And he said, I prayed for 20 years, but I received no answer until I prayed with my legs. He put some legs on his prayer. He didn't just say, you know, Lord, let's, Lord, please do this right here. Please put something in front of me. We went out and looked for it. Went out and looked for it. And that's what we need to do to, to try to keep from being a lazy Christian. We're waiting on God to drop, drop a blessing right in our, our lap when he's doing things all around us. We've been reading... The church is reading the Bible in, in a year. So if everybody's kind of in the same page, everybody's in Exodus right now uh, as, as part of that. And it hit me that God very easily, very easily could have turned Egypt into the promised land. But he didn't. The people of Israel had to go find the promised land. Egypt was set up. It had been great. 
It would have been real easy for God to have made Egypt the promised land. No. I got something for you, but you're going to go, you're gonna have to go a little ways. You're going to have to go look for it. And I'm going I'm to I'm 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 help you out along the way. I'm going to teach you some things along the way. I'm going to tell you some things, and then I want you to share them with others along the way. That's what he's doing with us. He could have just saved us. As soon as we got saved, poof, gone, poof, you're in heaven. It's the same thing. No, it ain't, it, it, it's not meant to be that easy. We've got a, we've got a journey that we've got to go on before we make it to that promised land. Just like the people of Israel. We're so much like the people of Israel, it ain't even funny. But he could have just took care of them. Poof. Boom. Egypt's yours. Gravy train. Poof. Saved, you're in heaven. No, we got a journey we got to go on before we get there. Are we hungry for these blessings from God, but we ain't willing to get out of the nest and go look for them? I got one more verse. It's in James 2 and 26. It says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Dude on the roof believed. He just wouldn't go step over in the boat that the Lord sent to him. He had faith, but he didn't have any works. The birds believe that the Lord's going to take care of them, but they've got to be willing to get out of the nest and fly down there and pick it up sometimes. we got to do the same thing. We say, oh, well, I believe. I believe in Jesus. I believe in God. Well, cool, so is the devil. And all his little gremlins, they all believe in him too. We got to be willing to go out there and look and grab a hold of these blessings that are all around us. No, I'm not trying to say salvation is through works, but Christian faith without Christian works sure is a waste of a good Christian. I read one time that you can't live a millionaire lifestyle with a minimum wage work ethic. And that's about as true as it can get. But as a Christian, we can't expect to live a highly blessed life with a lazy Christian work ethic. Oh, I want all these blessings poured out upon me and my family. We've all prayed that a hundred times in our life. And I'm going to sit right here and just let God do it in a hurry, if he don't mind. Well, that's fine if you just worry about you. We need to put some legs on our prayers. And when we get to be lazy Christians, and we all do sometimes, I ain't pointing fingers at nobody. Uh, we spend so much of our time looking for these blessings that we, we miss these opportunities and we miss these blessings that are just the Lord puts around us. All day, every day, and we're too worried about, again, looking for the parting of the Red Sea to see a flower blooming right beside us. Have we ever looked back and seen a missed opportunity to pray with somebody? I know I have. I, more times than I can count, I'm like, man, I should have. It drives me nuts, and I try to do better when people say, Hey, will you pray for me? Pray for me and my wife. We go, And I look back and say, Man, what was I doing right then and there that was more important than sitting there and praying with this guy? And I try to, I try to, and I fail often. I try to say, Yeah, I will, and I'll do it right now. Lord put something in front of me and I just, <laughs> me doing this over here to me was higher on the priority list than stopping this.
with somebody that it off as I get I get we in a little while. You know, was what I was doing really that important? And to me that makes me feel like a lazy Christian that I did that. I did that to this guy. I did that to God. I put off that opportunity that he gave me because I thought this over here was of so much greater importance. That that kind of stuff makes me feel like I was being a lazy Christian and not taking advantage of what God put in front of me. It could have changed that dude's outlook on Christians, you know? And I had an opportunity to, to be part of that in a, in a positive way. We need to look around and see what God's putting in front of us. Working blessings, working miracles around us all the time. And maybe slow down a little bit because we're all in such a big hurry to get to a bunch of nowhere. Or what we perceive to be so important that we miss out on, like we said, flowers blooming. Little babies laughing. I'm going to tell you, you can't buy that. You can work 24 hours a day. You can't buy that. Old folks smiling, birds flying, all these little things that the Lord puts around us. But we're too busy looking, like I say, for the parting of the Red Sea to, to see what, he, what he's doing. I mean, the sun's shining outside. It's a blessing that we, we, we get to. Just being here, we've talked about it before. There's they, they, they folks all over this world that would be killed for doing just what we're doing right here today. And I mean, killed and killed ugly. David was just talking about different parts of the world he's been, been studying on where them folks don't get to do what we're doing right here. This is a blessing that we get to come and have Sunday school together. We're not hiding out in a basement somewhere, hoping nobody kicks in the door. We need to slow down and see what God has, has put in front of us. And you might say, well, I'm not lazy. I'm always working and I'm always on the move. And I mean, that's cool. But sometimes being a busy person makes us a lazy Christian. Because we do like... I do a lot of times, and I put all this other stuff a little higher on the, on the list than, than I should. And I know we get caught up in our, our daily lives, and, and we get to running, and that we all do. And we get to where we want to, you know, schedule God's blessings in between places we need to be. Uh, I don't have a lot of extra time, God, so, you know... Make it worth my while. Make it, make it a doozy. You know, and, 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 and hurry, because I got, you know, I got about three other different places I need to be. Uh, let's don't be so, so, such lazy Christians that, that we miss what God's doing for us and what he's doing ar ar around us. Uh, When's the last time we thank God for bringing our family home safe at night? Man, that's a blessing. Let's slow down a little bit. Uh, I use the word lazy, one, because it kind of strikes a nerve on people. And secondly, because a lot of times it's accurate. People like to say, I'm not lazy. I'm all the time doing something. I'm wide open. You know, where are you going? Where are you going and who are you taking with you? What are you doing along the way of that, of that, that hurriedness, that busyness that, that we find ourselves in? And, and we all do, and, but we need to kind of pump the brakes a little bit when we realize that I'm being, you know, 
I'm not a lazy person, but maybe I'm being a lazy Christian because I'm so focused on all this other that I got to do that maybe we need to talk to the Lord about that. Lord, help me slow down a little bit and see, see what's going on around me. But sometimes the lazy, it's, it strikes the nerve because it is accurate in us. And I know when I think about it, it you know, nobody likes to be called lazy. I'm not lazy. There's plenty that I do. What's the quality of what we're doing? Let's not set back as Christians. We need to march boldly in our faith. And if we're going to be in a hurry, let's be in a hurry for the Lord. And I, I feel like He'll give us the, the time and opportunity for these other things in our life that, that we deal with. You know, everybody has their daily lives, and He'll give us the, the time and opportunity for that. But we gotta, if we're going to make a priority list... Where are we putting God in that priority list? We didn't know that the Lord's going to take care of us just like he takes care of them birds in the wintertime. But we also don't need to sit in our nest waiting on these blessings just to be sprinkled over the top of us. Sometimes we're going to have to get out there in the, in the field, so to speak, as the birds do, and, 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 and go find those blessings that the Lord's got sitting there waiting on us. We also need to, to, to look around and say, you know, maybe he's done sprinkled a bunch of these things all around me, and I, ain't, I hadn't noticed them. I hadn't paid attention to them like maybe I should have. That's all I got today. I'm going to ask you all to join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the ability to, to, to come in here and to read your word, Lord, and for you to give a, a message for us today. Lord, we ask you to help us not be lazy Christians. Lord, we ask you to help us to, to see the things that you put out in front of us and all around us. And Lord, help us to be mindful and appreciative for all the blessings that you give us. Lord, help us not to, to act in a way where we're just... We just take for granted all the things that you've blessed us with. Lord, help us to, to truly slow down for a minute and see what you do for us and with us and around us in our lives. Lord, I ask you to, to be with the pastor as he brings your message here in just a little bit. Lord, help us to open our minds and our, our, our hearts and just take in everything that you put in front of us. We ask all of this in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen.